Planting the 2015 corn crop got underway this spring as early as March for some parts of southern Texas. Planting decisions, including what crops and seed varieties to plant, started during harvest 2014 and involves many factors, according to Chad Wetzel, a Texas farmer. Uh, planting decisions are based on a, a crop rotation of mainly wheat and corn, and uh, we, uh, we also make decisions based on commodity prices and the outlook for future commodity prices. Many factors go into planting decisions, including profitability trends, fertilizer prices, and crop rotation plans. As Gary Purath from Minnesota explains, farmers want to make the best decision for the profitability of their farm and crop. This decision-making process starts by farmers evaluating the soil and the land that they have. We do a fertility test almost every year, or at least three years out of four on all of our crops. Uh, we want to make the best, uh, best use of the fertilizer we use. Most of it's uh, uh, spring applied and um, I just paid my fertilizer bill yesterday and I want to get every uh, the maximum use out of that dollar and I don't want to give it to anybody else. Weather controls the pace of planting. This spring U.S. corn planting was behind the five-year average until the first week of May. Then it caught up and overtook the average by almost 20 percent. Texas experienced a very wet spring and as Chad explains planting got off to a late start. It was not typical. Uh, as you've seen, our corn is uh, is only about ankle tall now, and it was actually planted about a month later than we normally like. Better seed technology helps farmers manage the weather and other outside factors. Kurt Hora, an Iowa corn grower, explains the benefits of biotechnology on his farm. Yeah, we 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 raise uh, mostly biotech corn in this operation, um, trying to utilize the traits to. Uh, keep insects out, keep disease out of our, the, the corn that we're raising. Um, we're able to use fewer herbicides because of the, the traits that are in the, that we're buying through the corn um, and fewer pesticides because that trait is provided, the insecticide treatment is provided, you know, through the biotech trait in the corn. Gary Purath, who lives near the Canadian border, has also experienced the benefits of using biotechnology. Short season corn used to be less productive, but now, according to Gary, biotechnology is boosting yields. I think the whole the science of genetics has just been really impressive. Uh, I think there was probably a 50 year flat line of, of a, it took four to five bushels you'd get for every inch of rain. Now that has risen from four to five bushels per inch to eight to 12 bushels per inch of rain. So that's the change that's just happened in the last 20 years. So we've seen a huge increase in yields, and especially in the, the early season genetics that we use, use up here. Um, you know, our, our, our yields are 30 to 40 bushels better than they were uh, not too many years ago. The U.S. routinely plants more than 90% of its corn in biotech varieties. As Kurt explains, U.S. farmers feel this technology is safe for their own family. We grow a lot of biotech crops on the farm, and and we feed our kids those same crops that we are raising, and we feed our kids the same pork that we are raising for the export market, for the domestic market. Thanks to advances in technology, yields in the United States continue to increase. The United States in 2015 is once again projected to have a very large corn crop, with the June WASD report estimating it at 13.6 billion bushels. That's 346 million metric tons. Ultimately, weather will be the determining factor in whether the United States achieves that projected bounty.